So the first thing you wanna do, guys, is you wanna make sure you're on Nike MCU, right there. You wanna come over here and make sure you're on Car Midi. And over here, it's not like typical DAWs. Wanna turn these off and leave on those three, but turn off everything on the left side like this, okay? So this is the starting setup for Logic here. How you guys doing today, YouTube? So let's get it going. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is a lot of people don't have the actual mixer with the faders here. So I'm gonna show you how to hook up the routing for the MIDI inside of you know the x32 edit app all right so first thing you want to do is click here on setup here at the top and then you want to go over to midi controls here the only things that you need is the midi transmit and these three here these are the only thing you need to run the x32 and logic you can uncheck everything else and make sure you're on car midi here this is not important here so that's all you need to do for this step you can close this app after that let's load up logic here so i recently purchased logic i was on a um a trial base version of logic to just to see but when they came out with that spatial audio it was a no-brainer a lot of these other dogs are offering spatial audio through a plug-in and then it's not compatible with big sur and stuff like that so then you end up with paying something like 300 to 500 dollars just for that feature and logic is 200 dollars in itself it's a no-brainer mm. okay number of tracks so i'm gonna show you guys how to do key tracks let's just do five tracks because it's repetitive so we're not going to do a whole bunch just for the sake of the tutorial and time okay now we're here in logic pro the first thing that you want to do is you want to click on let's press x on the keyboard x on the keyboard brings brings up the mixer here the first thing you want to do is click click on the track so we're gonna move this like this we're gonna turn to one we're gonna go up here to logic pro we're gonna go to control surfaces we're gonna go to learn assignment for volume we're gonna select audio we're gonna lead that to track number one we're gonna test it okay it's working fine I'm gonna leave that down let's put these back up I'm gonna leave this down and it's working fine right you're gonna click learn the next thing you want to do, click on track two. Move the fader. Don't do anything else before you move this fader, right? Once you move that fader, you click learn and you see it resets. Then you select audio and here, you make sure you click in the box and select channel two. Then you click out the box to make sure that two is in there. Then you can move channel two, see? Right? So. You click learn, because we know that's working. After you click learn, you click channel three. When you click channel three, same steps. You move the volume, right? You go here and you select learn again. It resets. Click this, click audio, and make sure you change this to track three, and you click out the box like that to make sure it's sealed in, and then let's test it. Now we got track three. So you click learn, that's sealed in. The next thing you do before you do anything, you click channel four, same step, let's move the volume like this. Once we move the volume, we wanna click learn. It's gonna reset. Select, select the track and pick audio because we're using audio tracks again. Again, you have to make sure you click in and change this to the exact channel and click out the box you can't like change it to let's say you can't change it to five or or track one or something and then hit learn that's gonna mess you up you have to make sure this is not selected blue this is where i was messing up at a lot 
Um, they wasn't clear. The Behringer video wasn't really clear. They should have had someone speaking instead of using uh, those words to explain what to do. These little things matter. So you click out the box like that. Let's test channel four. It's working. Let's move it down. Let's click learn. So I just made some additional tracks just to test it. So let's go to track 17 now. I want to make sure track 17 here and then move the volume for track 17. Click here on the X32 button there. Go to track 17. And I want to click learn audio. Put in a seven behind that one there. Click it in, seal the deal. And it does move track 17. Okay, so you guys can see that. So it's working on track 17. <clears throat> Um, unfortunately, I don't know how the X32 assigned these additional tracks over here. Um, I'm not sure if you can do it out of order in that way, to be honest. I don't, I'm not sure if logic will work that way. Uh, I can't get it to work over here, but you can use 1 through 16 and 17 through ter uh, 32 on this side. But I'm not sure about over here. Um, if I do figure it out, I'll make a new tutorial on that. But for now, um, I had a subscriber ask me for this. So I just wanted to show you guys because that Behringer video is very unclear. It's not like telling you the things not to do. Because I even struggled to figure this out. But I'm glad I got it working and I can show you guys how to do it too. So hit that like button. But I'm going to show you one more thing before we go. So if you guys interested in doing pan, right? Oh, I never clicked learn on channel 17. Let's go back and make sure. Okay, yeah. Click learn. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now go back to channel one. Let's go back. And here we're going to do some pans, okay? Let's do pan. So we're going to do pan. That's the last thing we touch. We're going to click learn. You see how it says parameter is pan. We're gonna select the audio track again, channel one. And let's test out our pan up here. See that? Pan is working. And then you're gonna click learn. It's the same steps for each thing, guys. You click channel two. You wanna move the pan. You click learn. Select the track audio, make sure you click channel two, seal the deal by clicking out the box and making sure that it's in there and it's not still highlighted. Let's check, it's working. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do mute. Okay, so let's click channel one. We're gonna go down and we're gonna press mute, right? We're gonna click learn, see? Cause that's the last thing we pressed. So you always wanna click what you want to basically um, assign to the mixer before you click learn. So after you done setting something, you click learn to set it in, then it'll be grayed out. Then you click the next thing that you wanted to learn. And when you do that, you select which track, I mean, what type of track by hitting audio, then you select which track. And once you know that, then you select learn. So yes, we on track one. I'm going to test the mute. See that? It's working. It's just like Studio One. Oh, it's not like Studio One. So you only have to press the mute button once in Logic. That's pretty dope. All right. So then we're going to click Learn here. And let's go to Track Two. When we go to Track Two, same thing. We're going to click what we want to learn first, which is Mute. Then we're going to click Learn there. Select audio. We're going to make sure we put in a two. We're going to make sure it's sealed in with the box off. Now let's test channel two's mute. It's working. Okay. Also, with the mute button, when you first assign it, you have to press it twice. So just press it about three times. Then it locks in and it knows it's mute. And then you only can need to press it once like that. Okay. So click learn. So solo is not going to work simply because 
when we set up the MIDI control, um, we selected the channel pan, the channel mute, and the faders. It, there was no like no instructions for the solo. So you're gonna have to solo in the program if you wanna do that. Let me take a peek here though at the X32. Let's see if we can get more intricate. I'm gonna see something here. Um, I wanna see all the channels. So you know what guys? I'm curious to see if we can do auxes. Let's see if we can do an aux, just for the hell of it, you know? Okay, let's make an aux track here. Oh, I forgot, you can't make an aux like this in Logic. I'm just tripping. It's that Pro Tools Studio One life, baby. So let's create a bus. So you see we got an aux one. So let's click on aux one. I'm gonna create a bus, <clears throat> uh, create a bus off of 17. And like, you know, just click in these boxes to make the bus, all right? So you go to channel 17 and let's move the fader on channel 17. Let's see if we can get an aux going. I didn't try this in studio one. So learn assignment for volume. Let's go to easy view. So we're gonna do auxiliary this time. Oh, so the auxiliary won't let you use the easy view. So for the auxiliary, so let's do X32 input. It works, y'all. It's working. That's crazy. The aux is working. See, I'm over here on aux. This is the other channels. I'm down here on aux. Aux is working, y'all. That's crazy. Logic fire. So what I had to do is when I came inside of here in expert view, you guys saw it. I just selected X32 there. So I'm gonna click learn. <laughs> That's logic code, y'all. Logic code. Y'all, like, come on, give it up for Logic. Let's give it up for Logic. Logic fire, Logic fire, real talk, Logic fire. You can do the aux. Oh my goodness, and I'm impressed, Logic. Seriously. All right. So there you go. That's how you do it, guys. You can do aux tracks in Logic. Oh man. Hit that sub and that like, baby. Let's go.